What was Elisha? What was he doing? Shepherd. Was he a shepherd? No, or like a farmer. He was a farmer, yeah. Not, not really a shepherd. He wasn't watching the sheep, but he was a farmer. He was plowing the field with his oxen. I'm talking, you're not. So he was plowing his field, and Elijah came up to him and threw his cloak over his shoulders, and Elisha said, right, right there, my life is changing. My life is never going to be the same again. Because now he was being called to be a prophet. Those of you who, let's go for some of the newer ones here. Do you remember the two things about a prophet? Two things about a prophet. What does a prophet do? I know those are, that used to be in my Sunday school class. You know this real well. Okay, number one, what does a prophet do? He tells secrets. He tells secrets. And he tells the future. Does a prophet have the power to do that? No. Some are saying yes and some are saying no. Who is saying yes? Put your hand up if you're saying yes. Who is saying no? Put your hand up if you're saying no. In a way, you're both right. Okay? The power does not belong to the prophet. God gives the power. So the power belongs to God. It is not the prophet's power. However, the prophet uses the power that God gives him. So no, those of you who said yes, technically you're wrong. It is not the prophet's power. It's God's power. But God gives it to the prophet to use. And the prophet uses the power that God gives him. <clears throat> now, as I said before, Elijah was the teacher. Elisha was the student. <clears throat> Those of you who were here last week, do you remember what happened to Elijah? He went up to heaven. He up to heaven. How? Do you, do you remember what he took him in? A chariot. chariot of fire. fire. Perfect. Perfect. Chariot of fire. So Elijah and Elisha were walking together, and Elisha, uh, he kept staying with Elijah. Elijah kept telling him, hey, you stay here in this city. Elisha said, no, I'm not, I'm, I'm not leaving you. So finally, Elijah said, what do you want? What do you want? He wasn't being mean or anything like that. He was just asking, what, what is it? I know you want something. What is it that you want? Does anybody remember what Elisha wanted? Not a soul, not quite. We're close, but... A double portion of the spirit. A double portion of the spirit. And again, the soul belongs to Elijah, but the spirit belongs to God. God puts his spirit in you. And that's how, that's how a prophet can do what he does, or she does, because prophets can be men or women. It doesn't matter. God doesn't care whether it's a man or a woman. And so the... Uh, so the power is God's, the spirit is God's. And Elisha said, the spirit of God that works in you, I want a double portion of that. And Elijah said, that's a hard thing that you're asking. But here's what I'll tell you. If you are, if you see me when I'm being taken away, God will give you what you ask. <clears throat> when it came time for the chariot of fire, and he began to come up, and Elijah began to go up in the chariot of fire, and Elisha saw it. Elisha saw it. Okay, close again, because I'm talking, you're not. Elisha saw it, <clears throat> and he, he called out the chariots of God and the horsemen, and all of a sudden, Elijah's cloak fell to the ground, and Elisha went and picked it up. And Elisha began to do the things that Elijah did. Now, Elijah, Elijah did some miracles, but Elisha did so many more. 
And we're going to talk about some of them. Now, I talked about one of them last week. I didn't even realize what this week's lesson was. But I talked about one of the things that Elisha did. And <clears throat> there were a bunch of men. They said, this area is not, we don't have enough room to live. We need to build more homes. We need to build more places. And so they went over by the Jordan River. And they were on the banks of the Jordan River. And they were cutting down trees. And does somebody remember what happened while they were cutting down trees? The axe fell in the water. The, uh, actually, part of the axe. The axe. No, the head. Part. The, the, head. Part. the head slipped off the axe and fell into the water. <clears throat> now, I'm going to assume that it must have been pretty deep water. Because if, if something fell into the water, wouldn't you just step in and get it? But if you can't swim and the water's deep, you're not going to do that, are you? So he called out to Elisha. He said, help me, Elisha, help me. The axe was borrowed. I borrowed it. It's not even my axe. And Elisha came over and he said, where did it fall in? And he showed him where it fell in. And Elisha took a stick and he threw it into the water where the axe head fell in. And the axe head floated to the surface. Axe heads don't do that. Axe heads are heavy. They're dense. And they sink. They sink. But this axe head floated. It. Floated. What, happened, what do we call that when, when, uh, when something like that happens that isn't supposed to happen? Those things aren't supposed to happen. Miracle? We call them miracles. That's exactly what it is. It was a miracle. The axe head floated to the surface, and he took it, and he, and he uh, attached it to the axe again. <clears throat> now, I want to tell you about another thing that the Lord did through Elisha. And there was a nation. Does anybody remember, and you can just shout out the answer. Does anybody remember what nation it was that Elisha was living in? Israel. And to the northeast of Israel, and even now, nowadays, you know, Israel is a country nowadays, you know, it is a modern country. And it exists exactly where it did back then. And to the northeast of Israel, I have this next. To the northeast of Israel was another country that existed back then, and it exists today. And it's called Syria. So the nation was called Syria. Kind of like that. It's like kind of cereal or syrup or it's called Syria. It's a serious nation. Serious. Thank you. Thank you. I take a bow for all those terrible or as Mr. Howe would say, that was a dad joke. What a coincidence. I'm a dad. <laughs> Back then, Israel and Syria were constantly at war. Guess what? Today, in 2021, Israel and Syria are constantly at war. They can't get along. They cannot get along, those two nations. They don't like each other. Israel wants this territory, and Syria says, no, it's ours. We want it. No, we want it. We want it. We want it. We want it. Kind of like when you and Jonathan fight over a toy. Yeah, don't don't tell me that. Don't tell me that. <clears throat> so the king of Syria, okay, guys, there's a lot of chatter going on. You need to have your eyes up here. The king of Syria declared war on Israel. And he said to his men, he says, we're going to trap the Israel army. Here's where we're going to camp. And this is, when they come by, we're going to attack them. We're going to surprise them. 
And God told Elisha. And Elisha sent the message to the king of Israel saying, this is where the Syrian camp is going to be. Make sure you don't go there. And if you do, make sure there's an army. You. I want you. It's your spot. He said, this is where the Syrian army is going to be. So the king of Israel sent his army there. No surprise anymore. The king of Syria again said, this is where we're going to, we're going to camp out. And we're going to surprise the Israel army. And God told Elisha, and Elisha told the king of Israel, this is where the army is going to be. And he sent the army. No surprise. Finally, the king of Syria said, what are you guys is telling on me. One of you guys is telling the king of Israel what I'm going to do. Who's the traitor? Who's the traitor? And one of his men spoke up. He said, There's no, none of us are the traitor. None of us are the traitor. God tells, there's this prophet called Elisha in Israel. And God tells him the very thoughts that you think in your bedroom. Because God can do that. See, every, everything that you've ever thought, God knows. Every idea that you've ever had, God knows. Every plan that you've ever made, God knows about it. Every secret that you ever thought was a secret, God knows. We have no secrets from God. He knows everything. He knows everything about us. He knows the best things that we've ever thought and the best things that we've ever done. And he knows the worst things that we've ever thought and the worst things we've ever done. And he still loves us. And he still loves us. And so the, the man told the king, he said, there's this prophet named Elisha. And he tells the king of Israel everything that you even think in your own bedroom. And the king of Syria said, where is he? I want to find him, and I want to capture him. And he said he's in the he's in the city of Dothan. And so the king of Syria sent troops to Dothan to attack, or to not attack, but to capture Elisha. <clears throat> that night, the army surrounded the city. In the morning, when Elisha's servant woke up. And he saw all the army of the Syrians. He got scared. He was afraid. We're doomed. We're doomed. What's going to happen? Elisha told him, he said, don't worry about it. The people that are with us are more than the people that are against us. How's that possible? Jonathan. Jonathan. Because how? Yeah, God was on your side. And see, what Elisha, Elisha knew that. And so Elisha prayed to God. He said, God, open the eyes of my servant. What happened? He saw chariots of fire. He saw horsemen of fire. They were angels. They were surrounding the Syrian army. And he knew. God was there. God was protecting. And so, <clears throat> when the Syrian army began to move in on the city, Elisha prayed to God. He said, God, strike them all blind. Make them all blind. And he did. He did. All of a sudden, the armies of Syria were coming on the city, and all of a sudden they can't now they can't see. How does that work? They have to stop. Boom! You're blind. You can't you can't see a thing. So Elisha, Elisha goes to him. You get to be my Syrian army. 
and you're blind. And Elisha tells him, he says, this is not the way. This is not the person you're looking for, but I can take you to him. These are not the droids you're looking for. Elisha had something else in plan. And he, he told the Syrian army, follow me. And so they followed him. I'm sure they must have been hanging on to him or something because they can't see. And he leads them on a march to the city of Samaria. Does anybody know what the city of Samaria was? Do you know? No, you don't. <laughs> Anybody know what the city, what was important about the city of Samaria? Hmm. Let me ask you this. Does anybody know what's important about Washington, D.C.? The president's there, the White House. It's the, it's the capital? capital. Samaria was the capital of Israel. That's where the king lived. That's where all the soldiers were. And so he took them to Samaria. And he took them inside the city. And the Israel army surrounded them. And then God said, open their eyes. They opened their eyes. Boom. All of a sudden, the whole army of Israel is surrounding them. Okay. If you are part of the Syrian army, and you just got struck blind, and you just got led on a journey, and when your eyes are open again, you are in the middle of your enemy. And they are surrounding you. Is anybody scared? No. Is, is anybody scared? No. Yeah? No. No. Scared? Yeah. 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 You know, you, more than more than a few of you are trying to find the bathroom right now because you're oh, that's scary. And here comes the king of Israel. He sees the Syrian army. He goes up to Elisha. He says, "My father, shall I kill him? Shall I kill him? Shall I kill him?" No, no, you wouldn't kill him. My. Goodness, if you are fighting in a battle and you captured prisoners, are you going to kill your prisoners? No. No, no you don't kill your prisoners. <clears throat> he said, no. Would you strike down those that you have taken captive? Feed them and send them back to their master. And so the king of Israel made a great feast. He fed the Syrian army and he sent them back to their king. And it says that because of that act of kindness, the Syrian king stopped raiding Israel. <clears throat> but that kindness was soon forgotten because another king over Syria decides, I am going to raid. And this was a very powerful king. And he raided the... Uh, he raided Israel, and his armies surrounded Samaria. <clears throat> does anybody have, does it, has anybody read anything about armies or war or anything like that? Okay, Tanner, let me ask you this. When troops surround a city, and they don't let anybody out, and they don't let anybody in, do you remember what that's called? Do you have any idea what that's called? No. Wasn't it called like the Anaconda plan, like where they squeeze people and then they like take them out? No. I suppose that somebody probably gave that. But there's a more general term, a little easier term than that. You don't know. <laughs> you don't know. Oh, <laughs> siege. Called siege. That means you surround an army or a city. Usually, it's a city. 
you surround the city with your armies. You don't let anybody come out of the city. You don't let anybody go into the city. Now, what's the biggest thing that needs to be brought into the city? Food. Food. When an army is surrounding the city and not letting anything go in, what's the first thing you start to run out of? Food, water. Food, water. The crops will die. Well, yeah, the crops, because there's nobody to tend the crops. Actually, what was probably happening is that the Syrian army was probably eating all the crops. You know, because the crops are outside the city. So they're eating all the crops. And so less food and less food and less food inside the city. And it got to be pretty desperate. Now, I'm kind of debating on whether to tell this story. It's going to be a little hard to hear. It's going to be hard to take, but it's in the Bible. So, as the king was going around in the city, and all of a sudden a woman cried out, Help me, king! Help me, king! And he said, Who's going to help you? Who's I mean, what, do I, do I have all sorts of riches that I can help you with? He didn't. He was, he was running out of food, too. Oh. You know, the king has a whole lot of money. But if you don't have any food to buy, what good's your money? Right? So the king's starving, too. And so he, he kind of gives a smart aleck response to the woman. You know, hey, you know, what's God? Am I going to help you out of all of my wealth? He said, what's your problem? She said, I live with this other woman, and we each have sons. And the woman said to me the other day, we're hungry. Kill your son so we can eat him. And tomorrow, we'll do the same with my son. Mm-hmm. That, people get desperate. People, it's really messed up. People get that desperate. And it, she did it though. She did it. And then the next day, when it came time to go for the other woman's son, she hit him. In other words, she didn't follow her own agreement. She didn't want to kill her own son. Exactly. Wait, she didn't want to, but she no, she didn't. She hid him. She hid him so that they couldn't find him. The, the child, the son, she hid him. In other words, she, she didn't live up to her part of the bargain. Or if, if you want to put it another way, the first woman was a sucker. She got conned into it. She did something horrible. And for what? For nothing. Well, when the king heard that, he got angry. He got angry. He said, you know what? This is this is God's doing. He said, if, if Elijah is alive tomorrow, may I be killed. Or Elijah. Elisha, if, see, even I mess up. If Elisha is alive tomorrow, may I be killed. And he said to men, to go take Elisha's head off of him. Kill him. So, oh, let's see here. No, I don't have any scriptures yet. We're going to have a couple scriptures here to read, but not yet. So there's Elisha. He's sitting in his house. The elders of Israel are with him. And all of a sudden, God speaks to him and says, the king is coming to kill you. So Elisha told the men around him, you see how this murderer has sent a man to come and kill me. Here's what you need to do. When he comes, lock the door. Shut the door. Lock it. Don't let him in. Right? Because the king will be soon following him. And so when the man came, and they, they locked the door. They wouldn't let him in. And he called out and he said, this is God's doing. This is God brought this on him. 
Why should we wait on God any longer? And Elisha said, by tomorrow, there will be enough food for everybody. There will be plenty of food by this time tomorrow. Now there was a man, he was, a, he was one of the king's chief officers. He didn't believe Elisha. And so he got really disrespectful with Elisha. And he started to smart off. He said, huh, if God should make windows in heaven, how would this thing happen? And Elisha said this, you're going to see it. You're going to see it with your eyes, but you will not be able to eat it. You will not be able to eat the food. All right. Who would like to read? Okay, we've got two readers. We're going to start with Jordan. We're going to start with you. We're in 2 Kings chapter 7. And uh, Matthias, we're, we're in 2 Kings chapter 7. We're almost getting to that shut up time here. <clears throat> there we go. I'm on it. 2 Kings chapter 7. Who said they're on it? All right. Yes. Are you on it, Jordan? Yeah. I want you to read. Sorry. Make sure you got it. Second Kings chapter 7. Yeah, go down to verse 3. <clears throat> Second Kings chapter 7, verse 3. And just go ahead and read verse 3. Real loud, yeah, real loud. Now there were four men with red leprosy. Leprosy at leprosy at the entrance of the city gate. They said to each other, "Why stay here until we die?" All right. Does anybody know what leprosy is? You know what leprosy is? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's. It's it's a, even worse than rash, but leprosy. <clears throat> it's a skin disease, is what it is. And what happens is sores form all over your body. Sores, not not just red dots, but sores, and they and they they're really gross. And leprosy is, it was something that was very much feared because it was very contagious. Do you know what that means well, when something's like contagious? Spread. What is it that we are, what everybody seems to be afraid of now that's COVID. contagious? COVID. Yeah. Everybody's afraid of COVID because we're all going to catch it, we're all going to die. Well, now I, I know people who have died from it. I know people who have gotten very, very sick and almost, there's a man in our church who got very, very sick and almost died from it. And so it's it's not, you know, it's not something that we make fun of, but remember this, God is more powerful than any disease. God is more powerful. I've had it. I've had it. It hit me. Back just before Christmas, I had it. And so did Miss Faith. <clears throat> and so did Lizzie. But, yeah. It happens. So, here's the thing, though. It doesn't matter. God is greater. So, back then, though, leprosy was the big thing that everybody was afraid of, and it was contagious. If if something if someone got all over you, and you know, you might catch it too. So, what they used to do is when somebody got leprosy, they were told to leave the city. They were not allowed to live inside the city. They had to live outside the city by themselves or with other people who had leprosy. And so that's why these four men that, that uh, Jordan just read about were outside the city because they had leprosy. They were not allowed to live in the city. And they said, what are we doing here? Why, why are we just sitting here before and we're going to die? Go ahead and read verse 4. Chapter 7, verse 4, which is real loud. Right. 
start with me staying here for the Can you see it? Is that too small for you to read? Uh, I don't know what it says there. Syrians. Just Syrians. So the guys are sitting outside the city. They say, okay, think about it. We got, we got three choices here. We could go into the city, but there's no food in the city. We're going to die. We could stay here, but if we stay here, we're going to die. Or we could go out and we could surrender to the Syrians. They might kill us. If they kill us, we were going to die anyway. But they might be nice to us and give us food. We're going to take our chances. And so they did. They went out to the Syrian camp and they decided to take their chances. But guess what happened when they got out there? Any idea? What do you think? Just use your imagination. There was... Guess what, Ella? A lot of food? There was nobody there. They went out to the camp and there was nobody there. What happened to them all? They didn't care. There was food in that camp. And so they went into a tent and they found food and they found drink and they ate and they drank to their fill. And then they saw gold and silver and clothing and all sorts of stuff. And so they grabbed that and they took it and they hid it. And then they came back to the camp and they found another tent. And they went into that tent, and there was more gold and silver in there, and more stuff for them to take. And so they're taking it, and they're having themselves a good old time. And then they thought, whoa, wait a minute, this isn't right. We, we shouldn't be doing that. Because what happened? If Now, it's in the middle of the night, and they say, if they're going to find out come morning time. And if they find out that we've been eating and drinking all night, and we haven't told anybody, we're going to get in a whole lot of trouble. And so they, they went and they went to this, back to the city. And they called to the gatekeeper, gatekeeper, gatekeeper. And the gatekeeper looks over the wall. We went to the Syrian camp. There's nobody there. It was empty. They left everything. And so the gatekeeper went and he told the king. And the king woke up in the middle of the night and he heard the news. He said, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Here's what... Let me, let me read this to you. <clears throat> he said to them, chapter 7, verse 9 here. Verse 9, if you're, uh, if you're following along. No, it's not verse 9, I'm sorry. It's verse... Uh, up, 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 up. Yeah, verse 12. Here it says, The king arose in the night and said to his servant, let me tell you what the Syrians have done to us. They know we're hungry, so therefore they've gone out of their camp to hide themselves in the field, saying when they come out of the city, we'll catch them alive and take over the city. It's a trap! I know it! It's a trap! They're trying to lure us out of the city, and when we come out of the city, they're going to take over the city. Don't do it! And somebody said, well, why don't we just send a scout? A scouting expedition. Just send some scouts out there. So he sent five men out there. And they went out to the Syrian camp. There was nobody out there. Not only that, they saw where the Syrian army had gone. What had happened? What had happened is in that night, God caused them to hear a noise. And it sounded like chariots. And it sounded like soldiers marching. And they said, oh my God goodness, the king of Israel got through to the Hittites and the Egyptians and hired them against us and now they're going to come kill us. And so they ran. They ran. They escaped. And they left everything. And these, the scouting expedition that came out of the city of Samaria, they saw the evidence of that. They, where the guys just threw off their armor as they were running away. And so he said, 
They went back to the city and said, it's true. It's true. It's true. Well, believe me, when the people heard about it, they all gathered at the gate. They wanted out. They wanted to get some of that stuff. And so the king got his most trusted official, the same one that was smarting off to Elisha earlier. He said, you guard the gate. You open the doors to the gate. When he opened the doors to the gate, all the people just ran out and they trampled him and he was killed. He saw, just as Elisha said, he saw the food that they would have, but he wasn't able to eat of it. All right, I gotta wrap this up. Because we're not going to make you guys starve. We're gonna give you guys food too. Yeah, Jesus. I'm about to like die if you want to Me too. Yeah, me too. Listen. 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 Listen up. Don't mess with God. God is not someone to mess around with. He can do great and wonderful things for you. You heard of all sorts of impossible situations that Elisha and the Israelites were in. And yet God got them all out of it because God can do anything and God can do everything. But never, ever disrespect God because the same God who can do anything also holds your life in His hands. And there were some people that found out the hard way God is not to be messed with. All right. Let's bow our heads. Father, we thank You for this time. We thank You for this lesson. We thank you for all the great and wonderful things that you have done. And not only back in the time of the Bible you did them, but you're still doing them today. And I pray that you would show these young people here, that you would show them your power, that you would show them that your love, that you would put your spirit in every one of them, that they might operate in, in your way, that they might do the things that you would have them to do. Lord, I pray that you would bless everyone as they go to their homes today, that you would bless them and bring them back again next week. In Jesus' name, amen.